Welcome back to Alpha Nurse Guide. I'm your host, Alpha Nurse. This is Chapter 9, Patient Education and Health Promotion. If you want the script for this video, you can go to alphanurseguide.com. You can follow me on all my social medias to get any updates. And you can follow me on odyssey.com as an alternative platform to YouTube. All links will be in the description. Alright, without the way, let's get started. Purposes of Patient Education The ultimate goal of patient education is the prevention of illness, promotion of wellness, and restoration of health. Nurses teach patients about their disease, or disorder, surgery, and self-care. Before discharge, the patient must be taught how to care for himself, at home. Modes of learning Research has shown that people learn in three ways. 1. Visually, through what they see, visual learning. 2. Orally, through what they hear, auditory learning. 3. Kinesthetically, by actually performing a task or handling items, kinesthetic learning. Many people do not know how they learn best. It is important to use a variety of teaching techniques, so that the patient both sees, and hears the information, and performs the action being taught. Modes of learning continued. Learning can also be categorized by domains. In the cognitive domain, the learner takes in and processes information by listening to, or reading the material. In the effective domain, the material is presented in a way that is appealing to the learner's beliefs, feelings, and values. In the psychomotor domain, the learner processes the information by performing an action or carrying out a task. Here we have our first checkpoint question. Question 1. In teaching an 82-year-old patient to perform a dressing change, to be done at home after discharge, the nurse would adjust the teaching session to A. Include another person in the instruction because an 82-year-old person will be unable to master the technique. B. Slow the pace and frequently ask questions to assess comprehension. C. Speed through the details because age and experience will shorten learning time. D. Provide written material and diagrams alone. Choose the best answer. The correct answer is B. Slow the pace and frequently ask questions to assess comprehension. Whenever you're dealing with an older client, you know, you never want to go too fast because it kind of takes them time to process information. So you really should slow the pace down so they can get a better comprehension. And you should also ask questions to make sure they understand what you just told them. Question 2. Because a person may learn best in a particular manner to improve patient teaching, the nurse should A. Ask the patient whether he learns best visually, orally, and kinesthetically. B. Use a hands-on approach because it works best for most people. C. Test the patient reading comprehension before using visual handouts. D. Use a combination of the three modes of learning to enhance learning. Choose the best answer. The correct answer is D. Use a combination of the three modes of learning to enhance learning. Most people don't really know which way they learn best, so it's probably best as a nurse to use all three so that you can get the best outcome. For myself, I learned best visually, which is why I created this channel for visual learner, but most people are not really aware which way they learn best, so it's just safer to use all three modes of learning. Question 3. A nurse is showing diabetic patient how to draw insulin out of a syringe. The mode of learning that the nurse is using is blank learning. A. Auditory learning. B. Visual learning. C. Kinesthetic learning or D. Oral learning. Choose the best answer. The correct answer is B. Visual learning. Visual learning is based on learning through what the learners see. So the patient is seeing the nurse draw the ensign out of the syringe. So it's visual learning. Fact 
Factors Affecting Learning Before beginning to teach, you must assess for factors that might interfere with the patient's ability to learn. Conditions that can affect the learning process include poor vision or hearing, impaired motor function, illiteracy, and impaired cognition. Age may interfere with the strength or dexterity for performing certain tasks. Personal stress, illness, low literacy, and lack of support are other examples of barriers to learning. Factors affecting learning continued. Situational factors that interfere with learning include pain, nausea, fatigue, a sense of being overwhelmed by all that is happening, and multiple interruptions. Attempt to reduce such situational factors before beginning patient education by doing the following: 1. Offer pain or nausea medication as needed and then wait for the pain or nausea to be reduced before performing patient education 2 present material in a calm unhurried manner and 3 place a do not disturb patient education in progress sign on the door to avoid unnecessary interruptions question 4 when teaching an elderly patient about changing his dressing the nurse would most appropriately a be certain the patient is wearing his glasses and slash or hearing aid. B. Talk to the process rapidly to keep the patient from becoming tired. C. Wait for the patient to ask any question about the procedure. D. Point out each mistake during the return demonstration. Choose the best answer. The correct answer is A. Be certain that the patient is wearing his glasses and or hearing aid. Whenever you're going to teach an elderly patient, make sure they have the device or item on. Otherwise, you're not really going to be effectively teaching them because they're not going to retain any information if they can't see or hear you. Question 5. The nurse is aware that the major modes of learning are. This is select all the apply question. So there are multiple answers. A. Oral. B. Tactile. C. Auditory. D. Kinesthetic E. Gustory or F. Visual Choose the best answer. The correct answer are C. Auditory D. Kinesthetic and F. Visual I mean, that's not really too much of a rationale. Those are just the modes of learning. You know, they're auditory, kinesthetic, and visual. Teaching to Children Play techniques can be successful when teaching younger children. The use of dolls and play equipment is appropriate and helpful. Teaching must be done in short segments to allow for the child's limited attention span. Language must be tailored to the child's level of understanding. Children interpret language literally, so avoid idioms because they can be easily misunderstood. Teaching to older adults When teaching older adults, the pace is slowed to allow more time for processing the information. Never assume that patients are literate. Many adults have completed schooling without learning to read adequately, and they may have spent a lifetime hiding this fact from others. A patient education plan that incorporates visual and kinesthetic techniques will often be the most effective for these individuals. Teaching to non-native English speakers Some patients who speak English as a second language may not be able to read English, even if they are fully literate in their original language. When working with a patient for whom another language is primary, offer printed and audiovisual materials in their native language, if available. If English is limited, use an interpreter for patient education sessions. Question 6. A nurse plans to teach a 4-year-old about what to expect after his broken arm has been casted by A. Bring a doll and casting materials to the room. 
showing the casting materials and actually casting the doll's arm and explaining the purpose of the cast. B. Telling the child that while he is asleep, the doctor will take off his arm and wrap it up. C. Breaking up the teaching sessions into two separate five minute sessions. D. Being treated as an adult because this approach helps the child to feel quote unquote grown up. Choose the best answer. The correct answer is C. Breaking up the teaching sessions into two separate five minute sessions. A lot of kids don't really have a long attention spans. You don't want to overwhelm them with too much information. So it's probably best to just have two five minute sessions and that way they can better retain the information and pay attention throughout the presentation. Question seven, a nurse who is communicating with a school aged child about receiving anesthesia for surgery later this afternoon would best describe the process by saying, A, the doctor who will be wearing a mask will put a needle in your arm and then you will go to sleep for a long time. B, you will just float off to dreamland and after you come back, your tonsil would have been cut out. C, after the doctor puts medicine in your arm, you will ride on a pony to where fairies will take out your tonsil, then you will ride right back here. D, you will be given a ride on a special bed to a big room where the doctor will give you some medicine that will make you very sleepy? Choose the best answer. The correct answer is D. You will be given a ride on a special bed to a big room where the doctor will give you some medicine that will make you very sleepy. Whenever you're talking to children, children interpret language literally, so you want to avoid any stories that might be frightening because they can be easily misunderstood. So you want to keep it simple and to the point. You know, simple enough where they could understand what's going to happen. You don't want to make up any kind of stories that's going to scare them. D is the best approach because you tell them the complete truth. You just simplify it to the point where they can understand. So it's the best approach out of all the answer choices. The Patient Educational Plan Preparing a patient education plan involves analyzing the assessment data, establishing behavioral objectives, or goals, and creating a plan for assisting the patient in achieving these goals, in the most timely and effective manner. Behavioral objectives represent the desired changes, or additions to current behaviors, and attitudes, and should be meaningful for the patient. They state what you are trying to teach the patient to do. Resources for patient education Many books and articles provide suggested methods and patient education aids for particular topics. Audiovisual materials, pamphlets, and hands-on equipment are also good resources. The Internet has a wide variety of resources available for patient education, but not all are medically sound. You must ensure reliability of the source and not rely on blogs or opinion. Implementing the Educational Plan Patient education can be done one-on-one, -on -one, or in a group setting. The teaching should be done in a quiet area to reduce distractions. Medicate the patient before the teaching session, if pain control is needed. Provide good lighting. Be certain he can hear, and see you adequately. Keep the patient education session short. Involve the patient in the process, call him by name, and ask for feedback as you progress. If teaching a group, establish eye contact frequently with each person in the group. Pause at intervals, and ask if there are questions. When teaching a procedure, discuss the steps of the procedure, demonstrate the procedure, and then talk patients through each step while they perform it. Have them write down the steps, or provide them with a written guide they can follow. Question 8. When a nurse is talking through a procedure or assisting the patient to learn, the nurse encourages the patient to A. Close their eyes and envision the process. B. Read the list of steps written on the poster on the wall. C. Write down the steps as she performs them. Or D. Verbalize each step until the steps are memorized. Choose the best answer. The correct answer is C. 
write down the step as she performed them. That's the best answer because if the patient writes down the steps in her own words, she's more likely to remember it. And if she doesn't remember it, she can always go back to the guide. Since it's her own word, you know, she's more likely to understand it. So C is the best answer. Question nine, the nurse will offer to plan the teaching session in a quiet area in order to A, ensure that the patient can hear what the nurse says, B, to reduce distraction, C, provide absolute privacy, D, make the environment more like a classroom. Choose the best answer. The correct answer is B, reduce distraction. You want to provide the teaching session in a quiet room because you don't want too much distraction that can hinder the patient from learning the material that you're trying to teach them. So it's the best answer. Evaluation of patient education. Evaluating the effectiveness of patient education is critical to the success of the process. It involves giving and obtaining feedback, return of information about the process, from the patient regarding what was taught, then using this feedback to determine whether effective learning has in fact taken place. A return demonstration of a skill, is one way of evaluating the patient's learning. Point out what steps were done correctly, and gently make suggestions about needed corrections in the procedure. If the return demonstration, or the review questions, indicate that the patient has not mastered the skill, or material taught, you would need to repeat the instruction and reevaluate performance before going on to a new area of patient education. Documentation and coordination of patient teaching. Each nurse is legally responsible for providing patient education and documentation is essential. The following information should be documented, specific content taught, the method of teaching used, and evidence of evaluation with specific results of the teaching. Information regarding the patient's education needs to be communicated to the primary care provider's office. If the patient is being referred for home health services, it is also necessary to communicate the information to the home care nurse. In addition, the family or significant others who will be caring for the patient should be included in the patient education sessions. Question 10. The nurse evaluates the effectiveness of teaching relative to how to use an eye shield after eye surgery is to A. Have the patient tell the nurse what he is going to do. B. Have the patient demonstrate that he can secure the eye shield. C. Ask the patient if he has any questions related to the use of the eye shield. D. Call the patient at home in three days and ask if he has been wearing the eye shield. Choose the best answer. The correct answer is B. Have the patient demonstrate that he can secure the eye shield. The best way to see the effectiveness of teaching is to have the patient do a return demonstration. When the patient does a return demonstration, you can see what they're doing wrong and what they're doing right. And if they're doing some things wrong, you can teach them the correct way to do it so they can do it themselves at a later time. So B is the best answer. All right, that's all I have for this video. If you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I'll see you in the next video.